Sorry, James. So the first the first thing he was mentioning is the Earth Earth based curvature, right? That the Earth has a curvature drop rate of eight inches per mile squared. Uh, that that was said to have been just a belief because you didn't know, uh, Larry. And the mm -hmm. second one was axial rotation that the Earth is actually spinning on its axis. Um, you said as as well with that one that you don't really know. Uh, you just believe that because that's what's been told to you. So it was, we'll put point number two being axial rotation as a belief. Yeah. Uh, the the vacuum of space, however, uh, that came into a little bit of like conflict in your mind, and you started to kind of reason away into like how that could be possible. So we're we're when we're talking about point number three, the vacuum of space, uh, gas pressure. In every instance that we could see here, whenever we talk about pressure. Uh, the necessary antecedent for pressure, gas pressure, is a container. That you just, you need one. You need a container in, in any example that you're going to have gas pressure. Now, would you agree with that, Larry, or would you disagree with that? Yes, I, I would agree that you do need a container for gas pressure. Okay. Um, and if we're going to demonstrate this to somebody, it, it's going to be something uh, that happens <coughs> always. I'm not going to be able to say at some point I'm going to give you gas pressure in an area without a container, like a high volume of pressure. And then, of course, adjacent to that would be like a lower pressure uh, without a container. I would not be able to demonstrate that to you. Do you agree with that as well? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. With that being said, uh, we're going to now go uh, turn to Earth. If we're saying that they're telling us at some point, the pressurized system, even if it's gradual, uh, becomes less and less to the point where it becomes nil and, you know, gets into a, like the vacuum or low pressure. And you have a pressurized system residing ne next to a vacuum. Then that right there without a barrier that you can't have that. In the instance that uh, James was trying to show you with the fish tank is that in between the pressurized system and the no pressure, uh, lower pressure system, The when you remove the barrier, that what would happen is that the high pressure would move into the low pressure until it equalizes. So that's what would happen always. And that's, that's what we see with the natural law. That's entropy, right? Hot moves to cold. Uh, high pressure moves to low pressure always. That's, that's what happens with, you know, uh, here on Earth, the natural with natural law. So if we're talking about the three points in the vacuum of space being adjacent to a pressurized system, then we could say assuredly that we need a barrier. That would mean that the earth would be a closed system. But yet they claim, the positive claim, is that the earth is an open system, meaning that you could travel with rockets into the medium of the vacuum of space. So this is not possible in the understanding that, you know, you need a container to have pressure. Now, there was uh, something you brought up. I was listening to the conversation. I think you said something like uh, the atmosphere is contain containing itself or something. Is that what yeah, you Yeah, yeah. Just kind of the, the actual barrier. The atmosphere right. itself is the barrier between Earth and uh, space. Oh. Okay, so what we're saying here is that the gas is actually containing the gas. Yeah, it it might okay. sound silly, but the gas. No, no, are... no. Right, but what what I'm saying is, if we're gonna demonstrate that, could we? Could uh, maybe not not here on Earth, not easily, of course, because we don't we can't recreate the atmosphere. Well, and... it's just it's it's a it's a mixture of gases, mm -hmm. so we can we can have you know the air that we're breathing. Uh, try to contain the air that we're breathing. I don't think that that's not a container. We need a physical container to contain the air that we breathe. Then it becomes, uh, you know, applicable to say that you can have high pressure next to a low pressure and, you know, side by side, but you need to have a container to separate them. If you don't have a container, the high pressure will move into the low pressure always. This is just yeah. entropy. It's entropy. It's just what will happen. Like we can't, there's nothing that we can do to prevent that from happening unless we have a container. No. Yeah. That, that, that is, that makes that sense. Is key. Uh, right. I just, I just remember this is kind of an off topic, but in like sure. star Wars, when like in the spaceship, you know, when they blow out the side of it and 
don't know if just like Star Wars, you know. And then you can see the changes in air pressure as the windows blown open and the people get sucked out of it. Right. Just adding so, up to your point. High pressure moving to low pressure. Well, you get the end. You get the idea. But that's what they say that it's the Earth is is uh, you know with the high pressure next to you know residing next to the lower pressure vacuum of space. So the reason why we're saying that cannot even exist is because it would break the natural laws in which we see the world around us abiding by. So you can't have high pressure next to low pressure like the vacuum of space and the air not rush into it. It just would every single time it would do that because there's no barrier to stop it. Gas doesn't contain gas. You need a physical container to stop that from happening. So point number three being that the vacuum of space is a medium that you could travel into is not possible in those regards. So what they're, whatever they're doing you know, to tell you that it's real, they're only reifying the idea that the vacuum of space is a reality, that you, they, man can travel to the moon and satellites in low Earth orbit, on and on, et cetera, et cetera. But for you to verify that, you would actually have to go there yourself. That's not possible. So verifying that the uh, air that we breathe is next to a vacuum is not possible. So right now, that stands only as a belief in your mind. Would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, I'd say if, if it's not measurable on, on Earth currently, then yeah, it would have to be a belief. Okay, so putting the, putting the three points together, meaning that Earth having curvature, the second one, axial rotation, and the third one, the vacuum of space, are all just a belief within the construct of the globe Earth paradigm. And so coming into this knowledge, we ask the people to honestly, you know, intellectually honest, you know, kind of look at those three points and say, do I really know or have I just been believing this? And so it always comes back to, you know, because you're being honest, Larry, that you just believe because you've been taught this information. There's nothing that we have done, and nobody has done, actually, I could say that with honesty. Nobody has done to verify this because these constructs uh, have only been given to us via uh, school, uh, you know, whatever movies, you know, however you, Star Wars, like the way you said, like the understanding of space and all that. So all these things are just, uh, their concepts in our mind that we carry on as a belief of something that, it, you know, that we think exists. So I'm, I'm just prodding your knowledge as to what you know, but uh, thank you for being honest about it. But it's still, as it remains right now, Larry, just a belief in your mind that Earth has curvature, um, that it spins and it's, you know, that we're flying in outer space and so on and so forth. So with that, with those three points being said, do you have any questions about flat Earth? And any any that you want to ask, and I'm pretty sure people here would would like to answer. Uh, no, I think that that was a really great discussion, and I appreciate okay. you like having this conversation with me. I just I had noticed Black Panther three two six had a question. Um, sure. So I feel like yeah, if he wants to ask that, he can go ahead. Oh, uh, I guess. Yeah, can I yeah. just get in before that? Whoever you were speaking to, Mickey, I don't know who you were speaking to, but I was really impressed with how um, respectful he was and how you guys just managed to talk. You know, and he that. just accepted oh. everything that was logical. It was really nice. Thank you. Really refreshing. We appreciate you. Yeah, hopefully that template works with some of these um, more astute guys. Uh, I have I have faith in that. Yeah, that was the template, uh, Jenny. Uh, is it written down? <laughs> Sorry. What's that? Is it um, written down? Do we have a, a type? Uh, yes, the, temp the template is curvature, axial rotation, and vacuum of space. That's so it. Earth curvature, Earth spinning, or moving, and space. <laughs> and, the, and the honest concession of them, of the three. So the honest concession of them three is is key to the to move on to the next one. So, right, if it's, so where did you see curve? Oh, right. Where did you find spin? Right. Where do you find gas pressure with And a so computer? so the logical end point of it is that it's a belief in all three points and that's where you need to wind up being on each point before you move on to the next. So the so the template works if you uh, bring the person to the understanding that it it's only been a belief system. But do it in a way that you open it up so that they can answer. Like I, I gave Larry the, the floor to kind of explore his, his understanding of what he knows. 
I didn't tell him what to think. I just asked him what he knew. There's no right or wrong answer to the, any of these questions. Yeah, I just I just want to add on to that. He, I honestly believe he did a fantastic job just with this debate because he made it feel very open and very comfortable. And uh, I appreciate that. Hey, no problem, Larry. Do you mind it takes if two I, to tango, uh, though? Before I would just say it takes two to tango, so it's uh, yeah. credit to you as well. Before the yeah, guy yeah. leaves, can I get him to do a thought experiment? Uh, I don't really have a ton of time right now to do that, but um, maybe really maybe easy. another time. It's really easy. All right. So, yeah, well, so well, if you I have don't a know. Six, I, yeah, if you have a I, six foot observer, yeah, flat Earth, flat Earth. I, I guess we got to respect the guy's, uh, you know, boundaries. He said he didn't have a ton of time, dude. Like, very easy. It's not even a minute long to do. Yeah. It's. Uh, I, I feel like we're pushing at this. You know what I mean? I know. Like, yeah. Give somebody... give some people some some others to have a chance to discuss because yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of others with questions here. So let let them have a chance. So you don't want to give him a real easy thought experiment regarding yeah, the horizon. <laughs> he kind of said that he didn't want to get into it. So I, I mean, at that you gotta you gotta know the boundaries. Like I guess sometimes, letter like you can't just barrel your way through. You know what I mean? He yeah, because that okay. one minute could lead. That one minute thought experiment could lead to a twenty minute conversation. Right, right. So because there's a lot. If, if, if he doesn't want to hear it, he doesn't want to hear it. I guess. Yeah, there's a lot of other people here though. It's Black okay. Panther might have a question for. Yeah, Black Panther was talking a lot in the lobby, so maybe he he's got some questions to ask. Hey, maybe I was just, just wondering quick. how time zones work with a flat Earth. Does anybody want to get that? To do with Who wants time. to take it? Well, that's yeah, okay. that's I'll take it. That's number two, you know, on the template. That that's along the lines of the spinning. Mm -hmm. That so, is. There you go. Take it, dude. Time is a constant based off the star. And probably the sun, or not, or the sun is a star, I guess. The question is how how do time time zones work? He's asking that, uh, if the Earth is flat. Does anybody want to take that? Sun is moving. That's the basic answer, right? The sun, moon, and stars work as a clock. That's what we actually base time off of. It doesn't matter the shape of the Earth. All time is based off the sun, moon, and star. I mean, I guess fun fundamentally, if uh, I'll I'll take it now. So fundamentally, what we're talking about is something we observe. So we we know that time zones happen. Um, if they happen on a flat or a globe Earth, is actually to do with the shape of the Earth, which we can measure directly. So to me, it's like one of those questions that's. Uh, it's like an indirect question, doesn't really answer anything. Um, so, I mean, can give you speculation if you like. How about, about some speculation or? How about an observation you can do on a globe model in real time in a classroom with light and two sticks and use the globe model to show that if you take two poles, you put one at the North Pole and you put one